Hey guys, Roger Wakefield here, the expert plumber, coming to you this morning to talk to you about what is an anode rod. Some people have no idea what an anode rod is. Some people have never heard of it. So what we're going to talk about today is what they are, what they do, what they're made of, and we're going to let them know why they're important to you in the life of your water heater. So what is an anode rod? First of all, an anode rod, if you look on top of your water heater, you've got a nut that is buried down inside the cover and there's a little plastic piece around it or, or the, the lid of the cover goes down around it. <clears throat> and what you do is the anode rod is a long rod that's made out of magnesium, aluminum, uh, an alloy, uh, aluminum zinc, something like that. <clears throat> And the whole purpose of an anode rod, that, that they call them a sacrificial anode rod. And the reason they call them this is, is the life of the anode rod is not very long. Meaning your water heater is designed to last six, eight, 12 years, whatever it is. An anode rod is actually the rod that goes down in the middle of it. And over the course of time, these little bitty cracks or holes start developing in the side of your water heater. And before that can happen, the, the anode rod will dissolve and whatever's on it, the magnesium, zinc, aluminum, whatever it is, will go and fill in that hole and, and kind of plug it up. So an anode rod really is in there to make your water heater last longer. Now they call it a sacrificial anode rod because it starts at the bottom and it dissolves on the way up and it goes out and literally plugs all these little microscopic cracks and holes in your water heater to keep it from ever leaking. The good thing about it is that makes your water heater last longer. Now, the good thing is also you can change your anode rod. So let's start off. What does an anode rod do? Actually, it's threaded into the top of your water heater. It goes almost all the way to the bottom. And like I said, as those cracks and holes appear, the anode rod starts dissolving from the bottom up and goes out and plugs these. And, and it gets in, it fills these in, and this keeps your, your water heater from leaking. So it's gonna make it last longer because of course, if it's not leaking, you don't have to replace it. So like I said while I go briefly, they're, they're made out of magnesium. They're made out of aluminum, zinc, uh, and an alloy. And what they do, they're, they're, it's coated around a steel rod. And it's funny because when you see an anode rod that's wasted, that, that is completely sacrificed itself, when you pull them out, that steel rod is about the size of a clothes hanger. It is literally reduced down to nothing. Now, what I learned at Bradford White, whenever I went on the tour of their facility, which their facility is phenomenal. But when I went on a tour there, the one thing that I learned and took away is the anode rod literally sacrifices itself pretty much in the first year. So I've read different articles saying that by changing your anode rod, you can double the life of your water heater. So if it has pretty much sacrificed itself completely in the first year, that tells me, okay, at the end of the first year, change out the anode rod and that's going to make your water heater last twice as long. Now, of course, you still need to flush it. You still need to do the different things that you do, but that's how you're going to make your water heater last longer. And just like anything else, the longer you make it last, the better ROI you got on it. Your return on investment is well worth it then. So how do you change your anode rod? First of all, you turn the water off to your water heater. Either open your temperature and pressure relief valve or open the drain valve on the bottom. If you've been flushing your water heater on a regular basis like you're supposed to, Go ahead and flush it right before you do this. Then you know that drain valve is operating correctly. It, it cycled well on and off. Go ahead, flush it before you do this. Then turn off the water to the water heater. Drain your, and when I say drain it down, just open it enough. All you're trying to do is take the pressure off. Take the pressure completely off. If you've got a two-story house or a lot of water lines ran over your head, you may want to drain it down just a little bit further because when you take a big socket and bust open that nut on top to free up your anode rod, unscrew it, and then slowly pull it out. Now guys, depending on where you're located or, or where your water heater is located, 
Me, I would have to have a collapsible or sectional anode rod. It looks like three pieces of rod joined together by like a swivel. Like a, if you're a fisherman, you know all about a swivel hook or a swivel to put on a hook. So what the way mine's installed, I don't have a lot of room above it. Not enough to stick like a four foot rod down in it. So what you would have to do is take your socket, take that big nut, loosen it up, pull your anode rod out. And then me, I'd have to take my little one, stick it in one section at a time, get it down, line my threads up. Guys, when you change your anode rod, make sure you put some kind of a thread protectant on it. I like using Teflon tape and pop dope. I use both because I don't want it to leak. So you take the old one out, you put the new one in, make sure that you slowly turn your water back on, check it for leaks real good and make sure you don't have any leaks around it. Guys, that's really all there is to it. If you've got plenty of room above it, say you're in an attic and you've got a large attic and you've got plenty of space above your water heater, take your anode rod, loosen it up, pull it out. You can take an entire new one, four or five feet long, however long they are, slide it down in the top, go all the way down to the bottom. Again, use your thread protectant. Teflon tape, pop dope, whatever you want to put on it. When I do it, I put Teflon tape on first. Then I go back and put uh, the T plus two pop dope around that and tighten it up in there. Get it good and snug. You'll notice that when you go to pull that anode right out, it is tight. It is in there very tight. We've actually got a plumber that actually uses an impact wrench to break those loose. So guys, changing them out isn't anything hard to do. It's something that you can do at home. It's something that you can do, like I said, after about a year, that is going to help you extend the life of your water heater. Now, if your anode rod and your hot water inlet are built together, Bradford White does this. Their hot water inlet is also, or their hot water outlet is also their anode rod. So if you don't see a nut on the top of yours or you have a Bradford White water heater and there may be one or two other brands doing that now, I think it's a great idea. You would still, what you'd need to do then is disconnect your hot water line. So whenever I say take the pressure off, you're going to want to drain down that water heater enough that whenever you disconnect your hot water line, you don't get water everywhere. Now, I believe when you're taking everything apart, put towels up there, catch everything. That way you don't have a big mess to clean up later. Disconnect the hot water line. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take that hot water adapter out. Now, that adapter is actually a dielectric union or a dielectric nipple. So that's what, one thing I really like about Bradford White. You've got your dielectric nipple. You've got your anode rod. You've got your hot water outlet all right there in one thing. What that does is that helps eliminate the number of outlets on the tank that could possibly leak. So you're going to find out. Okay, now that I disconnect this water, how do I get that anode rod out without literally messing up the threads completely? Now, remember, you're replacing this, so if you do mess them up, it's not too bad. But say you're just wanting to check that rod. What you can do is take like a half inch, I'm, I'm sorry, a three-quarter inch black steel T, thread it on to that nipple, tighten it up until you see that nipple move, then loosen it back up. That's going to undo the nipple. It's going to break the threads on the tank, break them loose, then make it where you can pull it out even easier. So guys, today we've talked about what is an anode rod? What does an anode rod do? What is an anode rod made of? And how do I change out my anode rod? Guys, anode rods are very simple. It's a very simple investment that can help you double the life of your water heater or at least extend it. No matter what it does to help me extend it, it makes it well worth it and helps improve your investment and helps you take care of the things that help you take care of your family. If you like these videos, please let us know. Please click the button over here, subscribe to our channel, tell your friends about it. We love doing what we're doing. My thing is, if we can put information out like this out in the public, let you share it with your friends, let you learn from it, let you save money. Guys, we're teaching you how to save money on your plumbing system and how to make your plumbing system last longer. So like I said, please subscribe. Please tell people about it. Please share our information. Help us get it out there. My name's Roger Wakefield with Texas Green Plumbing, and we're helping you save money one drop at a time. Thank you.